All right, this is John Cola with OKRaw.com. We're here at the uh, San Rafael Farmer's Market, and if you look right there, there's the uh, city center building, actually. It was uh, actually used in the movie called Gattaca. It's uh, a pretty cool movie. But anyways, uh, it takes us away from the point. We're here at the Farmer's Market, and basically there's two best times to arrive at the Farmer's Market, either, either early in the morning when they just open, and this reason is because uh, you're going to have the widest selection because as the farmers markets go on, they sell out of things. And so some markets that I've been to, like in Maui and Hawaii and other places, they'll sell out really fast. So if you don't get there first, you know, they're gonna be sold out of stuff by the time you get there later. The other time to get there is when I'm getting here today is getting here late. So getting there within about a half hour of the closing. And uh, the reason for that is uh, the farmers brought all their stuff, they've sold most of it, and uh, then they want to just get rid of the rest. So they actually they'll chop and reduce the prices at the very end. And so when you go to the farmer's market, don't forget your uh, reusable bag so you don't have to use plastic bags. Uh, some farmer's markets that are getting pretty progressive, like in Berkeley, California, they actually, um, they won't give you free bags anymore. You either have to bring your own bags or you're gonna pay for bags at their market there. So let's go and check out this market. All right, so there's all this produce here and this is a, uh... March, so it's mostly a uh, citrus season. Citrus is uh, what's in season now. Uh, kiwis, actually, they're selling. They were already harvested, and apples have been in storage and are still for sale. And of course, we have all the amazing greens, and people come from as far as Southern California to sell their avocados. And uh, we even have tomatoes, probably grown in hot houses. And uh, definitely veggie starts. No, here, this is an amazing uh, booth here. Farm stand with all kinds of crazy edible greens. They even have sugar cane. Um, these are mostly Asian green, a lot of Asian greens varieties. All right, so we've been here at the farmer's market for a little while, and you know now I'm going to share some of the tips uh, that I've learned over the years coming to farmer's markets. So I've you know been to farmer's markets all over the place. And the first question you want to ask actually is, you know, did you grow the produce or the, you know, the stuff you're selling? Uh, luckily here in California, we have certified farmer's markets, which means the farmer must have grown the food or at least he must have known the person that grew the food for him to sell it. Some places like in Las Vegas, it's farmer's markets are literally just people that go to a central wholesale place and buy the produce and then set up a shop and call it a farmer's market and then sell it to you. So it's really no better than buying it from the store. Another question to ask is actually, you know, when was the produce picked? That's very important. Um, you want to get the highest quality food, so that means it's going to be picked the soonest as possible to the farmer's market. So, you know, I really admire the growers that actually are out in the fields the morning of the farmer's market at 3 in the morning, 5 in the morning, or whenever, picking the produce and then bring it to the farmer's market that day. There are some farmers and you know I know one here at the market that you know probably picked it two days ago and it's been in their cooler you know at their farm for the last two days uh, and you know that's no good you know we should might as well just go to the store and you know that stuff is a week old if we go to the Whole Foods or other supermarket we want to get the highest quality produce possible so another question that's gonna that people are gonna ask you know is with the organic standards laws and whatnot, farmers have to pay a, a lot of money to basically become organic certified. So, you know, should you only buy from a certified organic farmer? Well, I would say not necessarily. You know, it's really important to get to know the farmer and to ask them, you know, are you organic? And they'll say if they are or are not, because if they paid the money, they could say yes, or they could say something like, well, we grow to organic standards, but we're not certified. You know, and that is usually good enough for me. And you gotta just, it comes down to trust on some levels, you know, and the other thing is a question I often ask is do you spray? And if they spray things, you know, then I'm much less likely to buy from them in most cases. Another question that people have is, you know, do you use synthetic fertilizers? And some people may really not want to purchase things from farmers that use synthetic fertilizers. I will sometimes, I prefer to use, buy from farmers that use all natural fertilizers. So what are natural fertilizers and what's a good question to ask to determine the quality of a produce? Well, the number one question to ask is, you know, ask the farmer, how much compost do you put on your farm regularly? And I don't know what that answer should be, but it should be a really large number. 
So if the farmer's re-enriching and constantly enriching their soils with, you know, compost, then that's going to build their soils up instead of, you know, using chemicals and things just, you know, every year put on some more fertilizer chemicals to just, you know, basically, it's like your lawn. If you have your lawn grown, you put on chemicals and make it green, but then the chemicals will burn off and then your lawn will turn brown and then you need more chemicals. So it's like the cycle. But if you continually put compost, you're going to enrich and rebuild your soil. Now for extra credit, ask the farmer if they're using rock dust. And if you want to learn more about rock dust, check out the website remineralize.org. And if they're using rock dust, they get extra credit. Now I definitely purchase from them. Okay, so testing the quality of produce. Say, you know, one place has organic uh, tangerines for a dollar a pound, another place has them for, you know, two dollars a pound. What am I going to go for? Well, you know, I'm going to go for the tangerines that are the compromise of the best quality and the best price. So, you know, if the two dollar tangerines taste a lot better and, you know, our taste buds are the best sense of um, quality, if it tastes good to us, then it's probably a better quality. If you really want to get technical, and I've done this before, but farmers do get mad at you if you do this. You want to get what, what is called a BRICS tester, B-R-I-X. So it's a BRICS sugar tester for fruit. Um, and you can actually take a drip of the produce or produce juice and put it on the BRICS tester and you can see the sweetness. And that generally, the BRICS is known as showing the sugar content of the produce. But not only does it show the sugars, it also will show the minerals on the demarcation line if it's fuzzy or not. And so you could do an internet search on BRICS testers, but one time I took the BRICS tester uh, when it was peach season, different farmers, and uh, you know they really didn't like it because they knew what I was doing. But see, if everybody had a BRICS tester and BRICS tested every fruit, then guess what? The farmers that had the highest BRICS would get the most business, and then the other farmers would really strive to increase their BRICS by adding things like calcium and adding more compost and growing a higher quality product and that's all what we're here for. We're here for getting the highest quality product at the lowest quality price. So how do you save money at farmers market? So while it's true that if you buy at the farmers market you will probably be cutting out the middleman and you'll be saving money since you'll be buying from the farmer direct so it's going to be a lot less expensive but you know even if it may not be expensive, less expensive, you know you're going to get a higher quality food and it's going to taste better too so I think that's definitely worth it. So if you do want to save some money at the farmers markets, how do you do that? Well, number one, you know, farmers markets is about creating community and creating relationships. So you're going to get to know the different farmers, you know, week after week, and you're going to go to the same ones. And you know, after farmers get to know you, they're going to work with you and they're going to, you know, cut you some deals because they're going to know you're a person that eats lots of fresh fruits and vegetables, and you'll be back every week to support him and her, him or her in her work as a farmer and they'll support you in turn by maybe giving you some better prices. Another way you could do that also is by, you know, buying by the case or buying large quantities at a time. So say they're selling a head of lettuce for two dollars, we'll say, hey, can I get, you know, six heads of lettuce for ten dollars? And then, you know, thereby you just, you know, got one free, but you know that now the farmer's selling that much more lettuce because he knows at the end of the day he's probably not going to sell all his lettuce and instead of taking it home you know he'll cut you some deals. Another way to do that is actually at the come at the end of the market as we are here today at the end of the market you know they want to just move things out and they'll start reducing prices although if you do come at the end of the market you're going to get the, the um, you know what's left at the end of the market so you're not going to get the optimum choices that you would have at the beginning of market and some markets at the beginning they have so few specialty items that I really enjoy it's definitely worth it to get there at the beginning of the market so the other tip is buy in case or buy by case prices so many times something like you know citrus apples and other fruits I'll buy by the box and you know by the box I'll save at least maybe you know 40 50 percent off the standard posted price you know if it's like two dollars a pound if I buy it by the case you know I may get it down to a dollar or a little bit over a dollar a pound so I'll be saving a lot more money so buy by the case especially you know if you're eating a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables generally on my vegetables I don't necessarily buy them by the case maybe if you have a big family you could do that because they tend to expire a little bit quicker yet another way to save money at the farmers market is to buy the seconds so many times ask the farmer hey do you have seconds and those are the ones that are bruised or you know sometimes they're a little bit overripe well, it's the ones that the farmers think are overripe, but for us, being that we like ripe fruits, they're perfectly ripe. So you want to get the overripes or the grade Bs or the seconds. They're oftentimes going to be a lot less money 
than the, the first quality produce that you'd find at the farmer's market. All right, so we're just finishing up here at the farmer's market. It was a great market here. The other thing I want to point out too is farmer's markets are great places to buy plant starts. So you can grow your own food at home. So take out the middleman of the farmer's market and grow your own food at home and be able to go to your front yard and pick your own food. It's really empowering to grow your own food. You're gonna get a higher quality food and it's gonna cost even less money than shopping at the farmer's markets. But that being said, if you're not growing your own food, definitely shop at the farmer's market. So also at the farmer's market, you can see what's gonna be in season and what's in season at that point in time so you can see what you should be growing at home. And I often do that for my personal life. So this is John Kohler with OKRaw.com and uh, hope you've learned a little bit about farmer's markets today on this show. We'll see you next time.